fearless. What would I do if I had no fear? Is fear a cognitive choice? Do we choose to be fearful? Do we choose to be fearless? Well, I really didn't know a lot about TEDx events, and this UCCI event was actually recommended to me by an associate of mine who said to me, you should apply to speak. And I did, and gulp, here I am at the TEDx event at UCCI. Fear immediately reared its head as soon as my associate said to me, you should apply, but slaying the fear giant, here I am today. When JD told me that a lot of the people here might be university students, that actually increased my fear a little bit more. And also my hairdresser made me a redhead about a week ago, which was unexpected. Here I am today, slaying, slaying the fear giant. Well, I shouldn't really be too nervous because after all, many years ago, I kissed the Blarney Stone. And for those of you that know the legend of the Blarney Stone, those of you brave enough to climb the, to the top of the castle and lean back over the battlements and kiss the Blarney Stone, you are gifted with the gift of eloquence or where I come from known as the gift of gab. So here I am today after kissing the Blarney Stone. My story begins uh, originally in the island of Newfoundland, which is a big rock out in the Atlantic. Uh, for those of you that are not sure where Newfoundland is, the Titanic sank a few hundred miles off the shores of this island. It's a hardy place for very, very hardy people where I come from. So that's a point of reference for you. As a young girl, my parents sent me on a Mediterranean cruise. I was 15 years old and I was very overweight. And we flew into London, then into Venice and took a Mediterranean cruise all the way to the pyramids of Egypt. And on this cruise, as a very overweight teenager, feeling very insecure and very outside of the in hip crowd at the time, I had an epiphany on this ship as we were sailing through the Mediterranean, looking at the islands and the Greek lights, the lights from the Greek islands at night, I knew that something had to change in order for me to have the life that was promised in front of me. So there was an epiphany at that time. Returning home from the cruise, there was a picture of me riding a camel around the pyramids and my father, who did love me, said to me, wow, that camel looks like it's in a lot of pain. So I decided to slay the fear joint giant, look at myself, and dropped about 87 pounds of extra weight. I also looked at what was feeding my appetite and the fear that caused me to be eating ice cream in the, ba in the basement. I did come from a loving family, but we had nicknames, maybe you do as well. My nickname was Ovi for overweight, and it still kind of stays today. So I slayed the fear giant, returning home, dropped the weight, transformed Donna. I ditched the low self-image. I started a new international career that promised a lot of public speaking and travel, which is just what I wanted. Right now, I, dis I discovered in last Friday's paper that there's a new app out that you can actually visualize how you're going to look once you lose the weight. We didn't have apps back when I was doing all that hard work. But one of my promises was if I got the weight off, I wanted to live on a Caribbean island and walk down a beach in a swimsuit and feel good about myself. I've been in the Cayman Islands for 25 years. Slayed the fear giant. What would you do if you were fearless? Risk and take steps to change anything about yourself. Look at the root of any problem. And today my main business suit as I live here is actually a swimsuit. Takes a lot of courage. So is fear a cognitive choice? Do we choose to be fearful? Do we choose to be fearless? The fear response. Well, fear can be a response to an adverse event in your life. For example, my sister as a young girl saw a mouse or a rat on my auntie's step and ever since has had a fear of anything that resembles a mouse. So she has a fear response to an adverse event. Is fear a learned response? A parent that says, don't, don't speak to strangers, instills fear in a child. Is fear inherent in our human nature, or is fear a choice? Common fears, fear of heights. If you, some of you may remember Princess Fergie. I remember her saying at one point, she had a fear of tall buildings. This gentleman may, may know the quote. And she said, if I'm on top of a tall building, I might as well jump because I know I'm going to fall. So that common fear of heights. Other common fears, fear of inadequacy. Wow, can I perform at TED today? What's the response gonna be? Are they gonna relate to me? Can I perform? 
Fear of money. Do I have enough? Will I have enough? Common fears. Fears of things that crawl like spiders. Fears of being lonely and lonely, uh, being alone, fear of water, and fear of the future, common fears today. How are you living your life, by fear or by faith? Well, my story didn't end with a big international career. It actually began the journey uh, with the death of a dear loved one of mine. Is death our greatest fear or is public speaking the greatest fear people have? Well, I was confronted with death at a young age when my fiance boyfriend and I were on vacation in Jamaica, just across the pond, and he drowned while we were there. We were there together uh, on a student's budget, number one, so those of you that are students know there wasn't a lot of money around at that time, and it was Christmas time in Jamaica. It was December, pow, wham, my life completely changed. There I am on this tropical island, didn't know anybody, and the man I loved had drowned. It was Christmas time. After one phone call to my father in Newfoundland, the phone lines went dead for about three days. And I was walking the streets of Negril, and I had strangers helping me. I walked as if I was walking 18 feet above the earth. I was totally blown away by what had happened. It was a fearful time. Darkness seemed to really crowd in on me. When I flew back home to Canada at Christmas time with John's body, my ticket said, body in transit. I deplaned the plane and met his parents for the first time. Talk about an encounter with fear. What happened after for about the following year, every time I ventured anywhere, I felt I was going to die. I really felt the car coming toward me was going to slam into me and it was going to be over. I was confronted with mortality for the first time in life. Maybe you can relate to a feeling like that, not necessarily a fear of spiders, but sitting in an airplane when there's a big drop and all of a sudden the, the airplane takes a little dive and everybody's fingernails are pressing into the airline seat. And once the pilot levels the plane out, everybody kind of giggles that little nervous laugh, looks around, coughs and says, oh, no problem. But that dropping of your stomach the minute that the airplane took a little dive, or maybe you've got a a car that pulls out in front of you and you've got to swerve and you get hit in the gut. Wow, that was close. Or maybe a medical report for yourself or some, for somebody in your family has initiated this response of fear that's beyond anything you've experienced before. Sure, we can have a fear of a spider, but when we're confronted with that impact of our own mortality, is there any greater fear? Well, I left uh, five months later and was brought to the Cayman Islands. I arrived at Owen Roberts International Airport alone, not knowing anybody on the island with no place to stay. A friendly taxi driver found me a nice little apartment to rent the back of his house with his wife, and I stayed in Cayman for a month. And I walked the beaches of Seven Mile every single day, trying to find myself, trying to make sense of what had happened. While here, I had a fear of water. My friend had drowned. Some of the friendly people at the old Holiday Inn got me on one of those pirate ships one night and said, this is it. In I plunged into the beautiful Caribbean Sea, started to snorkel, and overcame my fear of death. The footprints in the uh, sands of Cayman led me on further. Everything had changed in my life. I returned to Canada, left everything. I left my family my home, my career, my deep freeze, my country. And I ventured far to the edge, way to the edge, actually to the edge of the Pacific Ocean. I moved to Malibu, California, big change from Newfoundland, Canada. Again, I arrived at LAX one late one night, not knowing anybody, checked into a hotel for two nights and said, what have I done? And then went forth to a job opportunity that had been presented to me there. Stayed in Malibu for a while and then got to see things about life outside of my island home that I had never seen before. Ladies living on the streets with everything they own in a shopping cart. Fear, recognizing how close we can come to the edge of being a homeless person because of a circumstance in our life. Losing a job, losing your health and not being able to work 
maybe even an event like mine being so grief stricken that you wander to the edge of existence to find yourself again. I lived amongst strangers in California. People don't really get close there like they do in the islands. There was a sense of isolation. However, I needed to be brave. There were wildfires burning around in Malibu at the time, as they often do. I was far from my family. There was an uncertain future in front of me. I was in survival mode and I was going it alone. There are many reasons to be fearful, particularly in this day and age, but at any time, there are many reasons to be fearful. When we look at the footprints in the sand of what's ahead for us, the journey of the footprints, basically it's a day-by-day -day step into the future. To be fearless, I believe we must have courage, we must have faith, you also must have wisdom. I returned to the Cayman Islands about nine years later, was brought back here, it wasn't my plan. Fearless or fearful, fearless this time. An opportunity opened for me here, unprepared in my own thinking, to open a local company here in Cayman and Cayman Brack. Eventually that company ended and I started my own business here and I've been working on my own ever since. That's about 15 years now. Is there any fear associated with being a, your own business person? Absolutely, there are no sick days. So, started my own company working fearlessly. Here I am today slaying the fear giant, what's next? Well, I need to boldly speak out that what I ultimately want to do in my life is be the speaker and the writer and to tell my story of Jamaica and the events. There's so many details to share with people of that story. What would I do if I had no fear? I would allow the writer to emerge. There are three projects on the back burner for quite a while. There's a writer's retreat in Maui, Hawaii in June. I need to make a commitment and spend the money and go on a writer's retreat. I need to tell the story of what happened and then take a journey to Italy in September to actually finish the book. That's where the heroine finds herself, finishing a novel in Florence in September maybe amore, maybe love is going to come again. So fear, is fear a cognitive choice? Do we choose to be fearful? Do we choose to be fearless? When I was growing up, I always found myself gravitating towards the hero and the heroine in all of the little books that I love to read. Be the hero of your own story. Be the heroine of your own story. It's only when we step outside the comfort zone that we can truly discover who we really are and what we can accomplish. I hope that you do that fearlessly. Thank you.